Now, more than half of women say they've been sexually harassed at work, and most have never reported it, according to new research. The Trade Union Council says it's reached a shameful level, with many women subjected to unwelcome jokes, verbal advances and suggestive comments. Where I work, I've been called things that were not appropriate by the men I work with. I've been hit on in the workplace before. It's most dangerous and it's most upsetting, I think, as a senior person, um, because it can harm progression and it's, it, it makes you self-conscious about how you're seen. I think people are much more aware of the offence, which is a double-edged sword, of course. It means that people end up being worrying uh, risks of political correctness and thinking, I can't make any comments whatsoever. Sometimes, especially in hospitality, you get a little drunk and think they can just put their arm around you or touch places that are inappropriate. So, yeah, that's when it becomes a like, harassment. People kind of see it nowadays as anything can be sexual, sexual harassment, but I guess it takes something a little bit more. So, with 50% of women saying that they've been sexually harassed at work, when does being friendly turn into something more sinister? And when is office banter and when is it inappropriate behaviour? That's what we're discussing this morning with men's rights author Peter Lloyd and feminist activist Rebecca Morden. And you have been joining in to keep your comments coming in to us. Uh, Peter Lloyd, you first of all. Uh, should all of us ladies just be grateful we're getting these, this flattering attention? Well, I've read the report and women are indeed victims, although not of sexual harassment, but propaganda. I would readily welcome research which offered sober estimates of genuine cases, but this isn't it. Harassment is defined as aggressive pressure or intimidation, but here the threshold is so low that it's characterised by jokes or flirting at the Christmas party. This is not a credible study. Rebecca Morden, uh, so we're just all being a little too sensitive. We, we don't understand when someone's just perhaps paying us a compliment or making a joke. Well, of course, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with Peter about the report either. I think it's a very well-researched uh, well report. It's quite a unique report. I mean, the TUC have combined themselves with uh, everyday sexism. Se Vision of Sexism has a platform of thousands of women's experiences. The TUC represent over six million work workers, of half of whom are women. Um, I think it's exactly this culture that denies these experiences and uh, suggests that women are either oversensitive or just have, you know, not responding well to flirting in the workplace that, that allows this kind of behaviour to continue and creates a system in which we can we can basically intimidate people at work kind of without any repercussion. Now, of course, um, we, we, we don't exist in a vacuum. Women are harassed in public and on the tubes. And when you grow up as a woman, you, you know how, how much this stuff you have to put up with. You really don't want to have to put up with it once you've done your tube ride and you've left your house. You don't have to put up with it at work as well. It's not just friendly banter. I think men have to be a little bit more creative about how they relate to women, think of them more as people and less as, as, as objects to flirt with. And I think be a, bit more, a little bit more inventive and a bit more playful rather than just falling back on lazy sexism as a way to try and bond with female workers. Peter Lloyd, is it lazy sexism? Well, I think what's truly lazy is the study itself. I mean, it's so hugely one-sided. It only focuses on the behaviour of men towards women and it refuses to acknowledge that heterosexual women can also sexually harass men. There isn't a single acknowledgement in the whole study. In fact, the study cherry-picks data and it suppresses counter-evidence to construct this narrative that all working women are victims. And it's just not true. It's a distortion of truth. Uh, we, we did ask for people's reactions to this, and I, I should say, uh, uh, Rebecca Morgan, this was something that was pointed out by one of our viewers. Um, that, is there a double standard? For example, in the last 24 hours, we've seen a female TV host get a male sports star to lift his shirt, show his abs, and that's OK, but a male doesn't dare say anything that may be seen exactly. as inappropriate. Can females now get away with more than males? That's from Frank Hackney on Twitter. What do you say to that? Oh, actually, I think it's really interesting to talk about this because, um, again, the report's actually quite thorough when you read it. it. It does flag up that men get harassed. It's got a case study, actually, of a man who's been harassed, but he's been, as is usually the case, unfortunately, statistically, harassed by another man. Um, the reason that these, these figures are as they are is because most of the time... Uh, it, how it how is, convenient. It, it's men who are... No, no, let me finish, Peter, please. Um, it is men who are doing the harassment. That isn't to say that women can't bully as well. Of course they can. But, again, we're not in a vacuum. We're not in a, in a situation here where men and women have equal rights in, in society, you know, women are on the back foot already, and I think the study's really so interesting as well. So do you think it's well. okay it for does... women, women to behave like this? You know, for no, example, women in the office no, looking at pictures of Tom no, Daly in his shorts and no, making no, comments absolutely about no, it in a way no that bullying is a man okay, really couldn't do now, could he? Well, I think the whole point of this study is it's saying men do do it. No, I don't think that women should do that. But I think it's also really rare. I think that what we're seeing in this, in this study, and by the, the word of mouth from thousands and thousands of women, which we 
Why on earth would we discount that? Uh, is that actually, of course, they're still experiencing these things at work. They are still getting inappropriate touching. They are still having men pass around pornography. They are still having um, to, to, to fend off the advances of co-workers at parties. It, it, if we, unless we can accept the situation as, as it has been now quantified and reported back to us, then we can't change it. And we can't change it for men either. And I'd like to see kind of fairer and healthier workplaces for, for everyone, men and women included. And it's really important as well. This study does show that about a third of these, these um, reported, uh, the, the accounts of sexual harassment are coming from management. That's really concerning. To see real change in the workplace, we do have to look at the entire structure and we have to accept it's happening so that we can make a more progressive and healthy environment for everyone. Peter? But the, th but the threshold for what constituted harassment it was so low in the study, almost all of the cases cited were verbal and singular. They, they weren't a catalogue of physical assaults. They were just occasional verbal okay. comments, so often so on text of, messages. comments should, that was in the report, Peter? Be off, you shouldn't have to be fending off physical assault to not have um, you know, verbal and, and mental harassment in the workplace. Inappropriate no, look, okay. touching and, okay. and, 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 and comments Last Peter, week, are just, still sorry. bullying. Peter, of course they are. let me just read one of the comments that, that was in the report. It was somebody who left and one of her managers said to her, I regret not raping you. That's one singular well, verbal comment. One verbal comment. It's a pretty horrible one, though, isn't it? And I'd be devastated if somebody in my workplace in, said that to me. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, in the context, of course, he, that, of course that's horrendous. Of repeat well, sorry, that's a, sorry no, she of course, Rebecca, that's to Peter. Sorry. Workplace. I was just trying to get Peter's response course, to that, Rebecca. Of course, that's yes, horrendous. Yes. But there is no way of substantiating whether what that person said was true. It could be fictional. It could have just been made up. And even if it hadn't been, there are structures in place to help people. There is legislation against sexual harassment. Rebecca? People are, people are well, already the protected. The is, of course, a lot of the people that are doing part-time, casual contracts and zero-hour contracts, largely, again, these are women, of course, have very little of those protections. So, actually, I do agree with the part of the study that, that asked us to call for those, those kind of zero-contract hours and, and casual-hour contracts to have all of the statutory rights that currently protect uh, part-time and full-time employed people. And a lot of women are in those contracts. The study also did say, and, and I know this from my own anecdotal experience, that younger women are getting even more harassment because they tend to be in less senior positions and be even more kind of vulnerable. So, again, I think it's, it, we've, got to, we've got to first accept these these things are true and happening, so women deal are, with them. Younger women are claiming they're getting more harassment they work... because they're so paranoid. They've been indoctrinated to be paranoid, special uh, Honestly, special Peter, snowflakes. you really don't so need delicate. to be indoctrinated in it. It just happens to you all the time as a woman. I mean, I'm, I'm hardly right, a well, young you know woman what? now myself, and I'm still Last week, I was in the office, basis. and I was surrounded by a group of women who were all vocally looking at naked pictures of Orlando Bloom. They were sharing them on email. They were enlarging them on the screen. So... Am, uh, am I a victim of sexual harassment? And if so, why did the report completely omit my experience? Well, they didn't omit your experience, Peter. They, they, they catalogued uh, thousands and thousands of people. And unfortunately, the stats do no, back they up only the fact in, that men no, mostly they only, this, and, they only and women interviewed mostly suffer from it, but not And they solely. said that almost all the perpetrators were men. This wasn't credible research. No, no, this is just more man-hating propaganda. There, they, they had plenty of uh, stats on, on men in there as well. They, they actually do that. They also, only interviewed women. You can't... No, no, there, 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 was, there was case studies and there was, there, there was representation of men in, in that study, absolutely. The trouble is... We, we, you know, you're, we're, we're, again, we're, I think we disagree about whether there is sexism in society. You know, I think if you don't accept that women are, are dealing with these things every day, I, I, then you, you, you don't accept there's a level, a, a, a difference in the playing field for men and women, then you can't see the reality that's happening and you're part of perpetrating the problem, unfortunately. I, well, I really I, feel I, well, that if oh, we don't take these studies seriously, neither men nor women will have safer and more enjoyable workplaces and that's really sad. Well, you know, I, I agree with you, but, but at the same time, if only the people behind this study would have taken their research seriously. At no point did they analyse the behaviour of women. When these reports come out, f women read them and say, oh my goodness, I am a victim, but none of them assess their own behaviour. They too are responsible for healthy workplace environments. OK, Rebecca, let me I just put another point to you. We, we asked, sorry, Rebecca, we, we, asked, we did ask viewers to get in touch and loads of you did get in touch, I have to say. Uh, when Wisdom Fails got in touch on Twitter and said, human interaction, banter, touching at work, is how we make friends and enemies. Some we develop, some we shun. It's called social development. And a fifth of people meet their partners at work. Uh, isn't it the case that, it, that a workplace is often a place where there is flirting? If someone flirts with you and you don't flirt back, ha have they harassed you or have they just flirted with you? 
I think it's very, it's obviously very interdependent on how, how that flirting has been conducted and how it's been received and perceived. And, and I think you, if you grow up as a woman and you, and you know that every day you're getting more contact than you want from men, you're, you're not as safe in the world as, as, you, you, as you should be on public transport and in your, even in your own home sometimes, people touching you in the workplace is a step too far. I think you have to respect people's boundaries. I think we can make friends at work. We can have relationships with people and, and come out with, with strong friendships and, e and even future partnerships at work but you can't override people's uh, messages to you. You've got to be more sensitive and we've got to be more aware. And then also, you know, we will have stronger and better relationships. We've got to try and understand where each other are coming from a lot more than we currently do. And okay. by denying that women have these experiences at all, all we're doing is setting ourselves further and further apart. Nobody's I mean, denying um, that women have these experiences, but they are grossly inflated because okay. it's, it's designed to agitate. I just agitate. don't think you're right about okay. that, Peter. I'm sorry. Peter, having my experience as a woman does not back up the, your, your conclusion there, I'm we're, afraid. You're going to have to continue this debate off camera. I'm awfully sorry we're out of time. <laughs> Peter Lloyd uh, and Rebecca Morden, thank you both very much. A very entertaining debate. Your videos in entirety. Oh, yeah, she's a liar! <laughs> Alex Jones is a fucking liar! What does he lie about? He, he fucking makes up shit. What? Name one. Uh, fucking. <laughs> Tell it out of my head. Yes, I love it. He's got nothing. Hey, I mean, dude, he's.